Hello and welcome back to my second installment of uh, the fifth part in my series on transformations, the fifth installment being matrix transformations, the key to crystallography, computer graphics, and many other applications. In this uh, installment we're going to look at rotation transformations. And there are three that were derived by coordinate rules in the uh, first uh, set of videos on transformations one through four. Here we're going to derive a um, a generalized case for rotation of any angle and then of course we can use it for these three specific examples of a 90 degrees clockwise rotation, 90 degrees counterclockwise rotation, and a 180 degree rotation. We're talking about transformations by matrix multiplication where a matrix uh, vector X is transformed by the standard matrix of the transformation A into mapped vectors in the transform space T sub X. Each column of a matrix is a column vector relative to the origin of a vector basis. We listed last time a bunch of equivalent statements about that. The rows of each column vector in a matrix X are scalars of the unit basis vectors. And the example the 3D Cartesian coordinate system is just the unit vectors 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. The new transform coordinates are determined by matrix transformation of the form Tx equals Ax. The input vectors are in the old basis and Tx are the result in transformed vectors. Ma X is mapped onto T of X. The transform vectors are determined by the properties of a new basis but are reported in the original basis coordinate system. So here's our standard points, uh, arbitrary point 74 that we've been tracking through most of this presentation. And we're going to rotate this point to a new point through an arbitrary angle phi. And we want to calculate the coordinate in its new position. Transformation by matrix multiplication. The transformation involves a matrix multiplication of the input set of vectors by the standard matrix A. And in the past we've been deriving the A matrix uh, by deriving functions that map the vector to its equivalent transform vector. And so the rotation we're going to try a little different of an approach. We have the rotation phi and we need to describe the coordinate in the new position. We could come up with a relationship uh, mapping using the change of angle and uh, how that might affect the, the radius times the trig functions, r cosine theta, r sine theta. The A matrix is only complete if the input vectors uh, span the original basis in order to define Tx completely. So I think in many cases the A matrix is better determined if you uh, change the basis and actually describe the change of basis. So we can alternatively uh, do the transformation involving mapping from one vector system onto the other using the rules of the new basis. We can change that basis by deriving the transition matrix. And that changes the coordinate system from the old basis to the new basis. So now we're rotating the coordinate axes through the angle theta. The point was going to be rotated to the direction phi clockwise. This is now theta in a counterclockwise direction. And of course theta, the uh, counterclockwise direction off of the x-axis in a counterclockwise sense is the standard uh, conventional way of, of measuring trigonometric angles. Positive in counterclockwise direction off of the x-axis. So we're going to find the matrix that transitions bet between those two coordinate systems, then find the condition where returning those coordinates back to the original basis is the equivalent of the transformation. So inverting the, the uh, P inverse matrix, we'll find the transition matrix that performs the equivalent transformation. So the P inverse matrix is going to take us to the uh, new condition and the P matrix coming back is, is going to be the matrix coming back. The condition for where, where the P matrix coming back is the equivalent of the tra standard transformation matrix A is a condition that has to be proven. 
So the transition matrix P maps the vectors of the new basis coordinate system uh, back into the vectors of the old basis system. Um, it's just the convention is that the inverse uh, of P is the direction into the new basis and the P is, is the uh, matrix to come back into the into the old basis from the new basis. In doing that it'll return coordinates back in the old basis vector system which is what we want. So initially we, we derive the P inverse matrix which maps the vectors of the old basis into the vectors of the new basis. And then we'll invert P inverse to get P. Slightly different than doing a transformation, you're actually just changing the coordinate system. You're changing into a new way of defining the points. And in that, the, uh, the new point, X prime and Y prime, is going to actually be each component, X prime and Y prime, are both going to be functions of X and Y in the old system. So both components in the old system go into determining a single component in the new system. Here is the rotation of the axes. And we're going to try to resolve this point. These vectors are like this. The vectors in the old basis system that define uh, the, the point. There's an X component and a Y component in red, shown in red that define the point in the old vector system. So first we're going to uh, project both of those vectors into the new along the blue coordinate x-axis. Uh, we're going to project the, uh, the vectors of the old basis onto that x-axis for the, for the new coordinate system. So both x and y are going to contribute to the new x. And you're recalling your trigonometry a little bit. Um, the first vector is uh, the, the projection of the x-coordinate from the old x onto the new x is x-cosine theta. And the projection of the y-vector is uh, sine theta. And you have to do a little bit of uh, uh, work convincing yourself that those angles are equivalent, either by similar triangles or properties of right triangles that theta will give you 90 minus theta on that right triangle which then its complementary angle is theta. So the projectin is the sine, the side opposite. And both of those coordinates are in the positive x direction so there, that is going to be just simply a sum then. The new coordinate x prime is going to be the two projections x cosine theta plus y sine theta. But now we still have to determine a coordinate for the the y component based on the based on both vectors in the old system. Y prime is a function of both x and y. It helps to recall that a rotation of x off of the axis by theta degrees is the same as rotating y the same amount if those two uh, coordinate systems are at right angles. So rotating the x-axis uh, rotates the y theta degrees. We have a, a new relationship of angles that we can use for projecting uh, the old component vectors x and y, this time onto the y-axis. We project, first of all, the x-axis now will be projected through the sine of angles to the sine of the theta. And it's going to be in the negative direction, though. So the x component projects in the negative uh, x sine theta direction. And you can convince yourself that the, that the theta is matched by alternate interior angles. The y component of the old basis vector system maps to the new y component as y cosine theta. It's a simple projection across theta rotated off of y. The sum then is uh, y prime minus x theta plus y cosine theta is a new vector in purple, very small, down by the origin. So now we have the transformation or the transition matrix P inverse 
which determines the new coordinate system in a new rotated into the new rotated coordinate system from the old system. The two vectors projected like so and it gave us the two purple vectors, one along the x prime axis and one again along the y prime axis. And those are the values of the of the coordinates in the new x prime y prime system. So with the rotation of the axes we determined a P inverse matrix which determines the new coordinates in the new rotated system. And if we pull the coefficients out into a matrix we get the equivalent multiplication by matrices which is a cosine theta of x times x plus a sine theta times y is the first component of the new vector minus sine theta times x plus the cosine theta times y is the new component. This is the P inverse matrix, the transition matrix from the old coordinate system to the new coordinate system. So now we're going to determine the transition matrix that returns those new coordinates back into the old basis coordinate system. We have a special theorem that if the two bases are orthonormal, meaning they have uh, the x and y component are at right angles, the uh, inverse is fairly simple to uh, calculate. It's just the transpose of the matrix. So if that's the case, then the P matrix that we're looking for is the transpose of the inverse matrix. So the transition matrix coming back into the old system, the, uh, the only thing that happens is the sine theta uh, swaps signs between the uh, lower left and upper right. So this is the transition matrix P in blue between the new system coming back into the old system. So if we look at the angle theta rotating the axes off the x-axis, and recognize that that's equivalent to the transformation angle going the other direction from the point um, between the blue resolved vectors. You can see the relationship between the new coordinates and the uh, axis of the sweep. Now, they are actually a little bit different. The x component is a little bit shorter than the, than the radius in blue that sweeps from the old point to the new point the length of that purple x-coordinate will shorten as the uh, rotation continues and we approach a, a more significant uh, y value. But the arc swept by the radius a transformation that's rotating the angle. So here's a summary of our rotations transition matrix from the old to new in red as the P inverse matrix and the P matrix returning the uh, uh, coordinates into back into the old basis system because if you recall the transformation will using the a matrix will result in coordinates in the original coordinate system so we have a set of coordinates in the rotated system that look very similar to the coordinates in the old system if you rotated the point so when does re-rotation or unrotating of those axes the transition matrix from P to the back to the old basis system, when is that equal to this, the standard matrix of the transformation, which is just rotating the point and reporting the coordinates in the old basis? So when is A and P, uh, where, when are they equal? And the answer, of course, is when the angles are equal and opposite. But that requires a proof. But let's look at the uh, system. If we rotate the point through phi, the rotation angle of the transformation, it res results in a coordinate system down by x and y. It's very similar to the x prime and y prime in the rotated system. And the angle is opposite. There are the rotated coordinates and they look very similar to as if I rotated the point down near the x-axis in the unrotated system.
So and here's the condition where negative phi, the opposite of that transformation angle, is equal to theta, the rotation direction, if we were to rotate the coordinates back to the original. So in that case, the points will be the same. A will equal P or do the same thing as the A matrix. P and A will do the same thing as the A matrix under a certain condition when theta is equal to the opposite of the transformation angle. The proof of that is in another video. It does bear proving. In the meantime, I invite you to tune in for the next uh, installment of this series on transformation matrices. Part C will look at actual rotation transformation examples using matrices. We'll then wrap up with compositions, that is composite transformations, as well as give the proof. The condition where A equals P.